Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith, and how are you all today? And welcome to all the new people that we've got joining both on YouTube and on Patreon. It's great to have you. I'm here to not scare you to death today. <laughs> so, if you need to be scared to death, uh, there's other places to go for that. But what I want to talk about is, is not being scared to death. I got up this morning, and... Um, you know, I go through the news aggregators. Uh, I check Drudge just for the grins because they're they've become so so off the the reservation. Ooh, was that a little was that racist? Um, and uh, and and then others, Breitbart and and, and some others, <clears throat> just to see if there's anything new. You know, and there's not. <clears throat> I mean, it's different people saying things that other people were saying before. Um, but, you know, whether you want to be worried or scared to death about, uh, I don't know, the world situation or Russia or Ukraine or China or the latest comet that's coming or, uh, you know, the, the, the grid down or, you know, which, which is a serious concern. I, I keep that in the back of my head every day. So if you're not concerned, if you're not keeping track of or thinking about, uh, you know, preparing for the grid being down, well, you're, uh, you should be. Uh, I, I just put it that way. Uh, but, you know, then we can go into the, the, the social side and what all of the, 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 uh, the actors are saying and all the, the ball players that are such, uh, you know, uh, political uh, geniuses. Uh, or or inflation, or the collapse of the economy, or the collapse of the housing market, or the collapse of of uh, crypto, or the I could go on forever, right? And uh, and thankfully there are plenty of people covering all of those things. When I see that there is absolutely nothing new out there, and you know the Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun. All this stuff has happened before, and that's why if you kind of have an understanding of it, if you have a historical perspective of these things, you tend not to be as, oh my gosh, as worried as, as those who, uh, who, who don't. Right. So anyway, so after I read all the news and I saw all the things that were going to kill us this week and, uh, and destroy the country and everything like that, um, and I saw that it was, you know, the, the same stuff that was going to destroy us last week and collapse the country last week. Uh, I'm really not making light of it. The country's going in the toilet. It's gone. Who knows how long it's going to take. I don't see it turning around. It's going down in a ditch. The only question is how big is that hill? You know, how long are we going to ride this dog into the ditch before it hits bottom and uh, and gives us a chance to, to come, you know, see what we can build out the other side. So I'm not making light of that. It's serious. But to be all wound up about it on a daily basis does nothing but drive you nuts. And it's not good for your mental health. And if you want anything uh, when it comes to um, you know, preparing and living a good life now, first off, it's your relationship with God, and then it's your mental health. So you, you need to keep those in perspective. Um, so anyway, as I read all that stuff, and I saw that there was nothing new for me to be worried or scared about, uh, the, the, the kids were headed off to school, so I went out, and, uh, and I always stand on the front stoop, doesn't matter how cold it is, whatever. I'll always, you know, give them a hug and a kiss goodbye. Bye, guys. I love you. Have a great day. And then I take my coffee cup and I step out and, and, and stand on the front stoop and, and wait. And I wave, wave goodbye to them. It's just what I do. It's what I like to do. One of these days, they're going to look back and say, I remember Dad standing on that front stoop waving at me. <laughs> I still remember my grandfather, you know, he had a certain wave. Um, and as I was standing out there, I looked up in the tree and I took a picture of something that I think I'm going to use as the thumbnail here. And there was two squirrels nests out there. I've got a tree out here in front. This is just the most beautiful tree you've ever seen in your life. It's called an October glory maple. It's the last tree that turns, and it turns just an unbelievable color. And it's about the last maple that loses its leaves. And so finally, most of the leaves are off, and I can see these two squirrels' nests up there. 
up, way up high in the, in the tree. And, you know, the lesson was just absolutely clear. And that is, those squirrels are up there in their nest. They've been preparing all this time. They've been running around. They've been, they've been going through the dangers of the world, you know, running across the street, dodging the cars, uh, dodging my dog, you know. Uh, running along the tops of the of the fences and and uh, power lines and everything like that, uh, but now they're they're set. They're up there in their nests and they're above it all. And you know what they're worried about? Not much, not much at all. They're up there. They've done what they needed to do, what God designed them to do. They have their instinct that told them to gather their nuts and get up there. It's winter's coming, and um, go up there and. Don't worry. You've done what you can. Now, of course, the lesson here is obvious to us, right? Those of us who are interested in, in preparedness. And that is that we are, should do what we should do. We should prepare. We know that hard times are coming. The squirrel knows that winter's coming. We should know that hard times are coming. How do we know that? Because hard times have always come. You look at history, and it's nothing but peaks and valleys, hard times, good times, hard times, good times, right? All that. Why would anybody think that hard times aren't coming? So that's what we prepare for. Hard times are coming. We prepare for the hard times during the good times, the old lesson of Joseph, right? So just like the squirrel up there, um, he's up there not worried about much. If we are prepared, if we have done what we should have been doing, we don't have to worry about much either. None of these things, short of a nuclear war, um, is really should impact us. Now, I know that some will come on here and give a litany of things. Well, this should, this will do it, and this will do it, and martial law will do it, and this and that, and that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, I've talked about those things before, and I'll talk about them more again here, uh, probably in the future, about living uh, separate from the world around you. You know, separating yourself as much as you can uh, from dependence on those external interdependent systems over which you have little or no control. That is the, the whole purpose of preparedness. Self-reliance, not reliance on anything external, man-made. Rely on God, rely on His direction to you, and then rely on yourself, okay? as he has directed you. You do what he says and you're going to be fine. Um, and that doesn't mean do nothing like, like some people think. So those squirrels are up there. They're going to be nice and uh, worry-free in their nest because they've done what they should. And uh, we should also be worry-free. Uh, we can read the news. We can see what's going on. We should keep an eye on what's going on just, you know, because... Understanding what's happening in the world around us can give us clues as to what, you know, what maybe sh we should expect uh, next. It's always the same big stuff, okay, but it's the small stuff that we have to deal with as we, we go through the process of life. So if you've done what you should, stop worrying about everything. Increase the quality of your life. That should be that should be your number one priority when it comes to preparedness. Increase the quality of your life. If you're not where where you want to be preparedness wise, as far as stuff, you know, food, water, defense, whatever, any of that stuff. If you're not where you want to be in a place that you're for comfortable, well, keep working at it. Just keep working. Just don't drive yourself nuts over it. Okay, keep working at it. Little by little is going to win the race. You're going to be fine um, to the extent that you can. And, and don't get all, you know, all upset that you can't do as much as somebody else. We each do it in our way. And if we're doing the best we can, that's, that's what we ought to be doing. And if you've got all that stuff <clears throat> that you think, well, good. Then you're set. You can relax. <clears throat> How are you doing as far as uh, quality of life? How are your relationships? How are your relationships with your family? You having fun? Are you guys doing things together? Do you know each other? Are you spending as much time with the people who you should care about the most? Okay, those are the most fun things. Why do we have a good time? Uh, when the power's out, right? We've talked about that before. Power goes out and all of a sudden everybody comes together and they're sitting around the fireplace and playing uh, board games and, 
and things like that. I said that because Kelly's standing back behind you over there, and she knows she loves board games. I, she knows I can't stand them, so I just set that out there because to get an eye roll out of her. I'm sure that yes, there, there they go. There goes the eyes. Deep down inside, he really does love them. Deep down inside, there's only one game that I really like, and it's called the Good Game, the Get Out of Dodge Game. I'm going to review that here one of these days. Have the kids do it. It's a great survival and preparedness game. Uh, but being around the people that you love, being around the people that you enjoy, that's that's what brings people together in an emergency. And too often we allow those things to go by the wayside when things are good because we're busy, we're doing this, we're doing that, right? Mm -mm. No. Concentrate on the quality of your relationships. Let the people you love know that you love them, that you're thinking about them, you care about what's going on with them. How are they doing? How are they doing? You know, it's surprising that if you if you get below that level of, hey, how are you today? Uh, uh, you find some depths that are fulfilling for everybody involved. Um, so, so, so do that, and then, uh, and and then, and increase, strengthen, develop your relationship with God. If you're a little bit short on that, um, and we all can be, you know, uh, there's there's w w this side of heaven. We're never going to be as close to God as we should be, could be, want to be. Because it, it, there, there's so much depth there. You know, he's deeper than we are. And, uh, and we can go as deep as we <clears throat> can humanly, as much as we put into it. So if you're not paying attention to that part of your preparedness, your spiritual preparedness, I suggest that you do take some time, get to know your father, uh, have, have a relationship. You should have a deep, personal uh, relationship that makes you feel... Um, more secure and safer than you've ever felt before. Okay. So anyway, if you're worrying, stop it and do something. We worry because we're not doing anything about a problem. The minute you start doing something about it, you start worrying less. Okay. And be like the squirrel. Okay. Stay up above it all. You can look down there and see the mess. The squirrel stays up there. He sees all the cars driving by that could squash him if he was down there on the street, right? But he's not down there on the street. He's up there. He's looking down at it. And the same, same thing should be for us. We can look down. We can pay attention to what's going on in the world. And we can look down and say, man, what a mess. And then the next thought should be, I'm sure glad I'm not a part of it. All right? Okay, that's what preparedness is all about. Okay, uh, by the way, I should mention here, Christmas is coming up, right? I hope you guys are getting ready for it. Uh, the books are available on Amazon, the Stonemont series. If you haven't read them yet, you should. If you're at all interested in, in preparedness and survival and family and good stuff and history and politics and the way things ought to be done and justice and all of those things, uh, you will love this series I wrote it, so am I partial? Well, I I did the best I could. I wrote a good story, okay? And I think you'll like it, too. It's, uh, it's the Stonemont series. You can get it on Amazon and either paperback or Kindle. Of course, the Kindle's not much of a present. You can buy Kindle for yourself and buy a set of these for somebody else. Uh, there is the reversion, the revival, the renewal, and appeal to heaven, and the blessings of freedom. And I'm busily working on number six. I've been working on that the, this morning, and am going to work more on it this afternoon. I'm really enjoying the part that I'm getting to in this book. So, And there's a lot of people out there that says, I can't wait for book number six. I'm rereading the whole series, so I'll be ready. Well, that's great, and I'm writing as fast as I can now that I'm done with my busy season. But these are available on Amazon. I'll put the links down below uh, where you can get them. Uh, also, if you'd like to join us on uh, Patreon, I put a lot of good stuff on Patreon that I don't put over here. On, uh, on I shouldn't say over here because people on Patreon see this too. I put a lot of good stuff on Patreon that I don't put on YouTube. If you'd like to join us there, the link to join us on Patreon is also down below. And uh, we'd love to have you. So keep that in mind. Um, be at least as smart as a squirrel. Okay? Prepare. Stay above it. Stop worrying about it. Do what you know you need to do, and, uh, and you're going to be fine. And like we always say, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. The squirrel <clears throat> with a brain smaller than the acorns that they pick up prepared well 
and he's living well. So you all have a good day. Don't be scared. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.